Apparently the demo god is going to be on top of the world now as his match did 1.2 million viewers on yeah, the Wednesday finish, night. The finish did um, about over 580,000 viewers in uh, 18 to 49 and almost 1.2 million or right at 1.2 million viewers. So, yeah, you know, I mean, there's nothing as far as like Wednesday's rating that was anything... Um, surprising it was you know about what i would expect it would have done you know it's, it's like that it's different it's a different league when you don't have competition it's just a different you know the numbers are just going to be different and you know we've you know anyone with common sense would have known what was going to happen to these shows because i mean like the the nxt numbers uh for the last two weeks you got to remember that they were an unfamiliar night you know so it's like well they were up you know maybe a hundred thousand from usual and it's like on an unfamiliar night, that's like up 200, 200, 250,000. And the, um, the, you know, um, AW, you know, maybe they're up 200,000 from normal, but they were going up against Matt. And, and as, as was NXT, they were going against big time sports competition that's not normal. So, I mean, you know, the difference is several hundred thousand viewers for each show. And especially for, for NXT, it's actually bigger because NXT skews so, you know, ba basically what happens on Wednesday is the younger viewers watch AEW and the older viewers over 50 watch um, NXT. And so the AEW show actually this week, it didn't pick up that much with younger viewers. It did pick up. Some, it was only up. Well, I mean. It was up from from normal, you know, against the NBA. And you got to remember, the, the NBA hits the exact demographic as AEW. And they were up with the NBA um, because of no NX, I mean, no NXT. But they were also well up, you know, they had a big increase in over 50 viewers, which is their week demo, because those people usually watch, um, you know, NXT. And then on Tuesday, uh, for NXT, they drew... Um, I mean, it's still, it's not nearly as young as AEW, but they drew a much younger audience than they usually do. Um, they actually, the week before, did better, um, um, which, they, which they were going to. You know, I mean, it was a not quite as strong a playoff game, but more importantly, it's like, you know, you're not going to do, um, you know, you came in, in there with a one-hour Iron Man match with your four top guys, and even if you hot shot and you go right to the rematch the next week you're going to drop off a little bit and it was only a small drop off but it was a drop off and it was expected drop off but the point of all this is that they drew a much you know they, they drew the first week unopposed they did a 2.26 in 18 to 49 which is like 330,000 336,000 viewers and there's you know if they had gone with a normal show against this basketball and this hockey and aw on wednesday they probably wouldn't have done two hundred thousand. they might have done two hundred thousand. we've been right in that range so it was like a huge difference actually you know um it's a big difference obviously going you know for each side going unopposed if and, if, and again if nxt's tuesday became its regular night as opposed to a special night so people knew to watch it and it's not something that you kind of forget about and then catch up and watch later you know the number would be even higher so you know that's what it is it's whatever it's not a surprise and and the situation i mean look the situation would have been obvious week two into this in october so people going like they should move and it's like well it depends on what your goal is and that was never the, the goal the goal was to make sure that AEW didn't get renewed now that goal did not work. They're renewed for all those years, for four years, or three years in an option year, I think it is. No, it was no, it's four years, four year deal. So they're renewed until uh, the end of twenty twenty three, and but now the deal is just to keep them from hitting you know a higher number. So that's what the deal is, and and. Anyone who here's the deals. I mean, like it's been obvious from week one. We've said it from week one. It was obvious before week one because it was obvious when they switched to television. When they frantically switched to television, rushed it, got the two week jump. Everything, every move has been obvious. 
And it's like, and if, you know, if you follow any history of WWE, you'd know what this is because it's been the MO for 36 years. But for whatever reason, some people, you know, didn't want to believe and there's so much, you know, tribalism that you even when you deep down in your own brain you know you have to fight like oh i you know that's not true it's not true and you know fucking well it is but anyway at this point now it's like um you know there's no excuse i mean you can't deny it and 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 i'm not even saying it's bad i mean it's a business decision it's been the business decision it's a business decision they've done since day one um whenever they've been you know they, they did it to to stop you know jim crockett promotions from getting uh, a foot up on pay-per-view i mean it's just they stopped it they, they tried to do it to stop um wcw from getting into new markets i mean it's or or to draw um you know in certain you know on pay-per-view nights i mean it's been it's just been part of their strategy and it's like that's just what it is i mean good bad and different it's what it is and that's this is just an another example of it and that's that now um the, we only got the preliminaries in for saturday but they were way up for friday i should say and they were way up um so that's the roman reigns paul Heyman act is a real main event act i mean it's a real strong act and you know bailey sasha banks program is really strong i mean you can see that's the one that's been really strong in the uh segments when you look segment by segment and then ever since roman reigns came back I mean, they have not fallen down. Uh, Raw on Monday is going to be really interesting because uh, Raw, they're going really hard on Monday. They added a cage. They, they did a cage match on Wednesday, and now you're coming back Monday. You know, Wednesday they had the women in the cage, which did very well, by the way. Um, and it was a good match. And now they're coming back Monday with another cage match with Seth Rollins and Dominic Mysterio. So, um, and then Keith Lee and Drew McIntyre are doing a match, which... It's, it's so premature, you know, I mean, but it's God, like you're telling me so premature. Yeah, they shot know. an angle two weeks ago where we weren't even sure if Drew McIntyre was going to make it back by the pay-per-view. Then all of a sudden he just comes back with a fractured jaw. He's fine. And now he's wrestling Keith Lee in a non-title match well, on remember, Raw. Okay, no here, announcement last week. It's just completely out of nowhere. Well, because they're going against the NFL. And they didn't know last week they were going to go against the NFL this week. Well, maybe just hit him. I mean, they should have known, but Fuck, it just hit. But him. I mean, here's the thing. Here's the thing. It's like it's like he they like they go from Drew McIntyre not being cleared. Remember last week the whole thing? You got to get out of here. You're not even cleared. And now he's wrestling Keith Lee with with, you know. And it's it's it's. I mean, I guess there's ways to do it. I mean, obviously this is a match that nobody should lose, which is which is the kind of match that in this day and age it's probably best to avoid booking. But I mean, they could do so. Your choices are that Randy Orton interferes and cost Drew McIntyre the match, so Keith Lee's got to win over Drew. So whatever, or you know, I don't. Know, what, what, is there any other choice? You could just do a DQ, right? Randy Orton just yeah, you could have him run in and attack both guys. Yeah, you could just do a DQ. Well, probably attack just Drew. There's no point in attacking Keith Lee. Um, but yeah, so so essentially, we're gonna get a match that could be a good match but we're almost doomed to no finish and, and it's two baby faces for with no reason to face each other other than whatever you know um and it's like keith should be going over people but he shouldn't be going over drew mcintyre when drew mcintyre's facing randy orton on the next pay-per-view I mean, it's that that doesn't make sense, um, you know, especially in a non-title match at this. It's just but, you know, we'll see how it turns out. But I mean, it's just a look it, that, you know, it, 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 it's it's really interesting to me because when I watch um, AW, you know, one of the things that they do is is they don't throw all these great matches on television. I mean, they throw action matches on television, you know, like Pentagon and Phoenix against jurassic express it's a big action match it opens the show it's really good you know they'll do that but it's not like they'll put like john moxley against chris jericho on television um week after week um it's just not their style and i'm not even saying one's better than the other but um it is very clear it's funny because um aw uses television to build pay-per-views for the most part and WWE just is 
desperate to hot shot every week on television and um you know i mean like you just see that with this lineup um you know what they're what they're doing but um you know um i don't know that's yeah it's just when i'm looking at this at, at that at you know the two cage matches in in a week it's kind of like you know that you know what does that say it, it just says that we we are you know it's not like we're building solid well stories. we got that we got we got contract signings on practically every show we've got four ways to determine a contender two weeks in a row on smackdown once with the women once with the men well you know the I mean, there's a that, finite number of ideas we're seeing on wwe television repeated over and over again well that's but that's been the case for years i mean it's like you know one of the mo's of wwe was that they would have like a certain finish and then they would do it like five times because it's just like you just keep doing it it's it's that's just how it's been and i you know vince falls in love with something and then he burns it out and then moves on to something else which is whatever but um yeah the, the four the four way and the, the four way and it's always like four ways with that ends up um kind of weird i mean like like bailey and nikki cross on the pay-per-view Dude, they did. Not only did they do a four way to determine a men's contender last week and a four way to determine a women's contender this week, like it was practically the same match. Nikki's outside for the majority of the match. They even point out that Nikki's done barely anything in this match. And then Nikki gets the win. And it's like, we've seen Bailey beat Nikki 50 times. Yep. And now you're going to make Nikki the number one contender in a match where she's barely even in the match at all. Like, you've got to do something to make people care about these challengers. Well, especially with, with I mean... They and it's Nikki. not just getting your hand raised. Yeah. No, well, the thing with Nikki Cross is, like, they beat Nikki Cross so much, that the only thing that made sense was to turn her. And they didn't turn her. So it was just like, you know, now it's just... I don't know. I mean, I could see the idea... Dude, just she's makes... going to beat Bailey when Sasha returns and costs Bailey the match. But that's absolutely stupid because I was thinking that they may do that because they've beaten, you know, that you know, you know what I mean? That 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 Bailey's beaten her so many times. Yes. So they do that. But the whole thing is, is like Sasha Banks and Bailey is one of the. But Sasha Banks and Bailey is one of the hotter programs they have. It needs to go, um, you know, really multiple shows and with through stipulations and everything, or else if it's only going to be for one show. Um, then it's kind of, like they should never split them up because the team. Well, I'm not saying it's going to be for one show. I'm just saying that she costs her the title because well, okay, Bailey so costs Sasha all of her titles, and okay, you but, can but, do a long feud, and Bailey can win the title back. Well, who care? Who them feuding with no championship at stake is like ridiculous. It's like it's like it just takes that thing down so many notches. I mean, the whole thing should be. For the championship it's the it's the hottest program they have and you're going to take the title off that is that if they do it that way that would be absolutely stupid um but i don't know what they're going to do i mean yeah bailey should just beat ba i mean bailey should not lose to anyone but until sasha banks beats her and sasha banks shouldn't beat her the first time out because of you know bailey should should do something to get screwed early on and then build to a climactic thing because again if it's going to be like if Sasha Banks, you know, and I guess Bailey and Sasha Banks aren't even going to be on this pay per view. They're going to be in the next pay per view. So if that, if that's, if that's to happen, or maybe even Survivor Series, if they hold it off that long, but whatever, it, it'll probably be the pay per view after this one. Yeah, it'll be the pay per view. Their first match will be Hell in a Cell. <laughs> that's right. It probably will be. Yep. Yeah, and I mean, it. Hold on. Your dog really does not like this booking idea. No. Let me let me get rid of him. All right, Dave's back. Go ahead. Okay, so the first match is going to be Hell in a Cell. Sasha Banks has to win it then. Well, I hope so. You know, because they, you know, because that's that's. Well, know, I mean, if they, well, I mean, it is the first it, match of the feud. I mean, you you know they're going to go Hell in a Cell, and then like a normal match, and then some other goofy step. Yeah. So the if they are doing three matches, then then Bailey probably should win Hell in a Cell through some sort of shenanigan. Mm, I wouldn't. I wouldn't have Sasha Banks lose Hell in a Cell. I wouldn't have the baby face lose home. That's that's too strong of a stipulation. Um, any kind of shenanigan there, just you know. And why continue? What's the point? That's the whole point. The point is, it shouldn't be Hell in the Cell for the first match. It should be Hell in the Cell for the third match. <laughs> well, uh, 
And anyway, the whole thing is is that um, it should be for the championship. Nobody should beat Bailey until Sasha Banks beats Bailey. And but well, you know, we'll see what happens. Um, but again, it's like if it's not going to be a long-term feud with multiple matches, they never should have broken them up. And having Sasha Banks is a general rule when the first one, um, to me, it's like that's cutting it off too early. Um, I mean, you can always do rematches, but they won't be as strong when Sasha Banks is champion. So, again, it's almost like, well, then why, you know, why break up the, the you know, the act? And also the other thing is, is when they lost that, that women's tag team title, that took them off of the other show. And, you know, if they're the hottest act and they can be on both shows based on the strange rules of WWE, um, you know, that's not necessarily a good thing because, you know, God knows that like Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler being on SmackDown isn't isn't a difference maker at all. And they weren't even on this week. So, you know, there you go.